Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game So today I've got a fun and interesting episode for you guys this evening because of course Nintendo is back again with not one but two lawsuits going over piracy as well as the circumvention of protection measures on the Nintendo Switch. And this one's a very interesting case. Some of it makes perfect sense. Other parts of it make you want to question what's exactly going on. So we're going to go over all of the news, the lawsuit filings that are public, and kind of talk about what Nintendo is up to next. Because in one instance, they're asking for companies to directly provide and use of the hardware's addresses and you never know if Nintendo might be contacting you next. And before you go down into the comments and say fear mongering, it's happened many times before, DirecTV, Napster, a lot of different instances of that happening. Now you'll see here Nintendo filed two different lawsuits and they're mostly primarily involving the MIG Switch, the flash cart for the Nintendo Switch just like all of the other flash carts for the DS and the 3DS, allowing you basically to copy games over to a flash cart and run them like they were real cartridges. And this is after they've already got after Vim's Lair for all of the different Nintendo downloads of their retro games. Now, retro and modern is different as far as how fans see it, but the law sees them the exact same way. But Nintendo has definitely been going after basically any sort of ability for you to play their games on non-target hardware without owning a cartridge. And they've gone through so many different DMC takedown requests as well. Nintendo's just been absolutely hitting it hard in 2023 and 2024 when it comes to this stuff. It all started with them suing the maker of the Yuzu emulator due to piracy and they settled for $2.4 million which is not really surprising because when it came to light Yuzu was basically advocating for the piracy of games which should in any way shape or form never be done. This started in February of this year and it's already heating up and I'm assuming that the back half of the year is going to be even more so just because the Switch 2 feels like maybe it would be a 2025 launch. So if we take a look at the lawsuits here they're talking about two different lawsuits in and of themselves, one to a maker of the MIG Switch and someone who modifies the hardware, and another person who is operating Switch shops where you could actually obtain games that you did not own. And in both of these instances, the defendants did stuff that's just going to absolutely grab Nintendo's ire and make them look towards them. It wasn't so much about the actual functionality of the card in and of itself, it was the fact that some of these cards are being shipped preloaded with games, and in other instances, people were being directed on how to obtain games they did not own and the people involved were even joking in the background about why that was what they were doing this. You'll see here defendant not only offers the hardware and firmware to create and play pirated games but he also provides his customers with copies of pirated Nintendo games. To say that is a 10 out of 10 brass ring level of stupidity would be an understatement. This was probably the dumbest thing the plaintiff could have done but trust me it gets a little bit dumber here. I am not in any way shape or form defending Nintendo. A lot of what they've been doing recently with the Gary's Mod takedowns, with all of the Vim's Lair stuff, with going after sheet music has not been very fan friendly and it really just feels like it's buying them a massive crap ton of bad will. In this instance though, Nintendo's hand was absolutely forced. But they're still making the argument in the legal filing about the overall decryption key as well as the security setup on your Switch saying that it is not permissible to obtain that information. And this again is still something that has not been decided in a court and as far as I see it I think maybe Nintendo's lawyers would say as well if a clean case came just talking about the protection circumvention for you to run backups of your own games on your own hardware I don't think that clean case would end up with Nintendo coming out with a victory because you own the game, you own the hardware, you should be able to run a backup copy uh, that is permitted within the eyes of the law. Nintendo just does not like this whatsoever though and that makes corporate sense. They don't want this information out there because for everyone who backs up a game they own and runs it however they want, there's going to be a hundred people that do something like download a game they do not own and run it in a manner in which would technically be non-permissible. So I understand that but because Nintendo doesn't like it doesn't automatically mean that it is illegal. They have not got a precedent in any sort of court so that still is lingering here. But in the new lawsuit filings, they continue to talk about the technological protection measures, so this is something that Nintendo is going to continue to use moving forward, and I'm sure the settlement with Yuzu when they talked about that this was not permitted in the settlement, not a precedent, Nintendo loves hammering home on that topic. 
because as we discussed in previous videos, just because something can be done that wouldn't be permissible does not mean that makes it illegal for anyone to do in the permissible ways. Nintendo seems to just want to make sure that it is near impossible for anyone to back up their software and run it on any sort of emulator. And I've said previously in the video, I will back up software I own and run it via emulation so I can go to 4K60 and get the experience that I want that Nintendo Switch just does not offer, but I always buy the games. And I'm sure this is just down to lost revenue like everything else, even if Nintendo has more money than God in the bank, it is still a situation in which they want to make sure they get those last couple of dollars. Now, as we go further into this case, there's going to be an even more blatant disregard for being able to just walk away cleanly, because one of the defendants in one of the cases was contacted by Nintendo and told to stop, and he agreed to stop, yet he did not do any of this in any way, shape, or form. If Nintendo calls you and says, hey, you're doing something we don't like, we want you to stop, you stop immediately, you walk away, and you hope you don't see any other letters in the mail. But one of the lawsuits directly talks about the fact that they were in contact with the defendant, he agreed to stop making or selling any mod chips or modifying any consoles. Now is there an argument to be made that modifying a user's console to get them their keys to play the backups of their games they legally own? Sure, you could make that argument, but you're never going to win against the massive juggernaut that is Nintendo's legal team. If Nintendo calls you and tells you to do something, you say thank you for letting me know Nintendo, I will cease and desist immediately, let me know if you have any other questions. Like Gary's mod was asked to take down decades worth of Nintendo related content, just assets modded into Gary's Mod. There is no other answer to these requests than to just comply, because again as I've said in pretty much every video, you're not going to win here even if you might be technically right. When Vimslayer got all the DMCA takedown requests, they adhered to them, they removed the content in question, and everything basically just stopped from there. So saying you're going to do something and then not doing it in the eyes of Nintendo is probably even worse, because they should have full well known that Nintendo was going to look back in on this thing, it's not like they were just going to pretend it didn't exist anymore. So seeing in the lawsuit that the defendant agreed to stop this action and then did not whatsoever, Hall of Fame level stupid on that one. And the worst part is Nintendo is requesting all of the invoices, purchase orders, and shipping confirmations, which means Nintendo's asking for your information if you purchased a card from one of these vendors and there were games on it. I'm not saying Nintendo is going to contact you, I'm saying they could contact you. DirecTV did it back in the day with illegal cards in receivers. More likely, Nintendo's trying to prove damages here. If they want to settle or if they want to win a court case and they want a damage award, they need to have some sort of math to foundationally back up what they're asking for, so if they can show that they shipped a thousand cards with five pirated games on it a piece, then you can say that's 5,000 times the retail price plus additional damages. And Nintendo is going to continue to go after actions like this, and in the instance of these two MIG Switch lawsuits, both distributing games with cards or otherwise making it easy for piracy to occur, it makes sense that Nintendo would do something like this. Especially in the current climate where Apple has opened up video game emulation on iOS, Nintendo is going to be looking at everything with a magnifying glass, trying to find anything they do not like and going after it. And Nintendo has definitely done a lot of things they do not agree with, the DMCA takedown request of sheet music, the Vimslayer stuff, the things like Gary's Mod. Those do not really benefit anyone, they just make Nintendo look bad, but in this instance, if you purchase anything from these vendors, you might want to check the mailbox. I'm not saying Nintendo's going to contact you, I'm thinking they're just trying to calculate their damages, but there is precedent out there for companies to go after the purchasers of these products after a lawsuit is settled or decided and try to recover damages from them as well. These two lawsuits make perfect sense, the defendants did some very dumb things, and now everyone has to deal with the consequences. Sure that, we're done, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.